Hello everybody, this is Calamity here, or at least that's what my AIM username is. Today's video is going to be all about our favorite funeral parlor director, Hu Tao. She's currently having her rerun banner right now, and in this video we're going to go over everything you need to know about her, from her weapons, artifacts, talents, consolations, how to do her basic combos, and of course, a Spiral Abyss showcase at the very end. We have a lot to go over, so let's get started. Hu Tao is a very, very strong single target uh, Pyro DPS, although you could use her for groups, but she really excels at just absolutely melting bosses in just seconds. And with that being said, her kit, very similar to like Deluxe or Pachings, we use the whole kit. Like, you don't, you shouldn't just be focusing on like on one ability or, you know, one or two talents. You definitely want to get all of her talents up to at least level eight. Well, let's talk about what they actually do. Her normal attack talent is called the Secret Spear of the Wang Shang. And this is just a very normal standard attack, uh, standard normal attack talent. There's no fancy gimmicks here. Um, she does have a six hit spear combo. Charge attack is that, you know, the common lunge or the charge forward lunge kind of thing that all the spear holders do uh, and a regular plunging attack. So let's move on to some more interesting stuff or elemental skill, which is called guide to the afterlife. So when you tap the skill button, a bunch of effects are going to happen all at once. So let's go over each one. The first one is that she's going to increase her attack based off her max HP. So she's going to lose HP first and then gain attack uh, in exchange. She can gain 400% more base attack from this skill alone. Second part, all of her normal attacks are going to do pyro damage and this cannot be overridden in any way. So if you have a Candace on your team, if you have a Chong Yun on the team, their conversions do nothing to Hu Tao when her elemental skill is active. And the third part is that her charge attacks are going to apply what's called a Blood Blossom. This is going to basically just do pyro damage over time. And the last effect is going to increase her resistance to interruption. So it's like a, it's like having like a little mini shield uh, on you, but. Not, you know, without the protection. And lastly, just so you're aware, if you do activate her skill and then you're like, oh, I forgot to activate my other team's buffs or I need to reapply my shield or something like that, you will automatically end her elemental skill duration. So just keep that in mind. Make sure you got all your buffs, all your off-field DPS ready to go before you pop uh, Hu Tao's elemental skill. So if we look at the skill attributes, the activation cost is always going to stay at 30%, no matter how high of a talent level this gets to, it's always going to cost 30. The attack percent increase, though, is going to go up as you increase the level. So if I show you here, I go to level 9, you get a tiny bit more, you know, percentage uh, increase from the uh, from our max HP. Blood Blossom does do a little bit of damage, but keep in mind it does, again, just it's a dot, so it'll it deals much more damage than it appears yeah, even though there's a low multiplier there. It has a duration of 9 seconds and a cooldown of 16, which is really important to know when using Hu Tao. So let's move on to her elemental burst, which is called Spirit Soother, and this one is a pretty straightforward burst. Um, she's going to do AoE damage uh, around her, AoE pyro damage that is, and it's going to do a lot of damage as well as heal Hu Tao herself. Now if you activate this burst when her HP is low, It'll do even more damage and it will heal Hu Tao even more. So if you look at the skill attributes here, you can see the difference in the damage multiplier going from 447 to 558 uh, when you actually activate it at low HP. Same for the heals, much more heals there. And it only has an energy cost of 60, so that's really nice for us, meaning we don't need to go too hard on energy recharge. Uh, you do want some, right? But uh, Hu Tao is a character that doesn't have to burst off cooldown all the time. In fact, it's okay if you your burst is like up, you know, maybe every once every other rotation is perfectly fine. Now let's move on to Hu Tao's passive talents, and the first one is Flutter By. When you activate Hu Tao's skill, all of your allies, except Hu Tao herself, unfortunately, but it is what it is, get a crit rate increase of 12% for 8 seconds. So one of her popular teammates to use with her is a Xing Cho, who does all of his damage off-field, so Hu Tao will give him a 12% crit rate boost, which is really, really nice. The next passive talent is called San Sanguine, Sanguine Rogue. This is going to give Hu Tao a major damage boost when her HP is equal to or less than uh, 50%. 
going to give you a 33% pyro damage bonus, which is an insane boost there. And Hu Tao should always be at low HP all the time anyways. Our last passive talent is more of a troll more than anything, called the more the merrier. Um, and anytime you cook any dish, you have an 18% chance to get the suspicious version of the dish, which is basically the worst version of, of a dish. It does have some interesting effects when you do it to like quests where you have to cook for people. You'll get some interesting reactions to your dishes or if you give it to your teammates in the teapot, you'll also get some interesting reactions there. So you just wanted to see what people say when you give them a suspicious dish, that's about it. Other than that, it doesn't really have that much use. So let's talk about weapons for Hu Tao. And thankfully she has a lot now. Obviously you can see I have her signature weapon, the Staff of Homa. It is one of the best weapons in the game overall, and in, but to nobody's surprise, it is going to be her best in slot weapon. So if you get it, awesome. If not, don't fret. You know, there's plenty of four star options as well. But I also want to quickly just mention that if you have any other five star pole arm uh, weapon from other banners, such as Staff of the Scarlet Sands, uh, Primordial Jade Spear, or uh, you know, just any like DPS related pull arm, there's tons of them for, for pull arm characters. They're all gonna be good. But now let's, you know, let's tone it down. Let's go to the more friendlier free to play options. And for Hu Tao, one of the best four star options you can give her is a Dragon's Bane. This is going to give her a bunch of elemental mastery, which is gonna increase her vaporize or her melt damage, whichever one you're going for. But the weapon's effect is definitely tailor made for uh, vaporize teams because it's going to increase the damage your opponents take when affected by hydro or pyro which is in a vaporize team that's going to be all the time and you can get this for a five minute five for even more damage and make sure you get it to level 90 unlike me for more elemental mastery and more damage of course another good four star weapon that uh, i can recommend i don't have it though is the lithic spear i'll have a picture of it popping up right now um the lithic spear increases i believe attack percentage and crit rate depending on how many characters are in the party that are from Liwei. Hu Tao herself is from Liwei, so there's already one character there, and her best team, which includes Jing Cho, Yulan, and Zhang Li, all four of those characters are Liwei characters, so you're gonna get the maximum stacks from that weapon, and of course, if you can get it to refinement 5, even better. Now, if you're looking for some 3 star star options, because you're brand brand new and you literally have nothing uh, in terms of weapons for Hu Tao, then I can recommend either the black or the white tassel. The black tassel gives you HP percentage as you can see here. So, you know, that, that is going to be more damage for your Hu Tao. White tassel also going to be like a, you know, decent option, but you definitely want to upgrade yourself to a four star weapon as soon as you can. Now for another free to play option that you can do is go to Paimon's Bargains here by pressing escape, clicking on shop, and then Paimon's Bargains on the left. You can buy yourself a black cliff pole. The currency used to purchase weapons um, in the store is just from just doing your pulls and you'll eventually accumulate this currency and you can trade it in for a weapon if you so choose. Now keep in mind, Paimon swaps the weapon sets that are available each month. So this month, at the time of recording, it's the Blackcliff set, but if you're watching this in October, then it's going to be the Royal Guard or the Royal Weapon set and that one's not that good. So if now is the time to buy your Blackcliff pull for Hu Tao, otherwise you're gonna have to wait till November. Now unfortunately these next two weapon recommendations aren't really free to play friendly because you do have to buy the battle pass to access them. The first one being the deathmatch. This is the classic pull arm weapon that is available on battle pass. It gives you a bunch of crit rate. Also gonna increase your attack um, percentage depending on how many opponents are nearby. But the more interesting one that we definitely should um, talk about and definitely recommend over the deathmatch is this new one called the Ballad of the uh, Fajords. I don't know if I said that right, but if you can get this weapon to refinement 5, which by the way nobody has yet, at least at this time, this is a brand new weapon and there haven't been enough patch cycles yet, um, but this weapon also gives you crit rate just like the deathmatch. However, if there are at least three different elemental types in your party, your elemental mastery is going to be increased by 120, and this is only refinement one. If you get to this sort of refinement five, I need to double check how much elemental mastery you get, but it's going to be a decent chunk. That's a huge amount of elemental mastery, which is going to be big, big increase in vaporize or melt damage. So this this weapon ends up being really good than, than honestly a lot of the five star options um, that Hu Tao has. So. Definitely consider this weapon if you're considering um, purchasing the battle pass in the future. 
Okay, let's move on to artifacts for Warrior Hu Tao. Now, as you can see, mine is using the Crimson Witch of Flame set. This is honestly a great set for any pyro character. Gives you bonus pyro damage, and then it increases any of the um, pyro-related reactions. So in our case, it's going to increase Vaporize by 15%, or if you use Melt, also 15% as well. Now, I do not recommend farming the Crimson Witch set. Instead, go to a strong box um, at any alchemy station in any town, and please just trade in your, your bad artifacts and get, hopefully, some good Crimson Witch pieces instead. That's basically how I farmed all these pieces you see here. Now, if you don't want a Crimson Witch set, you do have other options as well. The first one being the brand new uh, Mayor Chow... I don't know how to say this. Mayor Chow uh, Someone's going to have to help me with the pronunciation in the comments, if you would. Um, the Hunter set. I'm just going to call it the Hunter set until I learn how to pronounce this. This is the brand new set in Fontaine. It increases your normal and charge attack damage by 15%. And then as you can see here, when your HP increases or decreases, your crit rate is going to increase by 12% for 5 seconds, and this has a maximum of 3 stacks. So you can definitely easily get 1 just by popping your elemental skill. And then Hu Tao will lose or gain um, HP as she does her charge attacks or as she does her burst, so you should always have some sort of um, stacks going on for this set. And you're going to get a you know maximum of 36% crit rate just from this set alone letting you go ham on those crit damage stats instead. Now, another set you could go for is the Shimanawa's Reminiscence. This is the set in Inazuma, and at the cost of 15 energy, you will gain a 50% damage increase to your charge attacks. Really, really strong um, buff there. The only downside to it is that you your burst will have an even longer uptime. Or, uh, like, a sh there's going to be longer intervals between your bursts, obviously, because you're losing energy from using the set. So if you're okay with not bursting as often with Hu Tao, then the set is is fine. One more set I can recommend for Hu Tao mains out there is the Gilded Dream set. This set just gives you a bunch of elemental mastery, and that's more Vaporize damage, more, more Melt damage, and the buffs are based off your team, uh, your teammates' elements, whether they match Hu Tao or not, and well, you just want to get as much elemental mastery as you can, and that's pretty much it for this set. Speaking of substats, now that you've decided on an artifact set, what kind of subsets are we looking for? Since Hu Tao is the main DPS, we're looking for the usual offensive stats. So we want crit rate, crit damage. Um, in Hu Tao's case, HP percentage is damage. So, so we learned that from reading her elemental skill that she gains attack based off her HP. So that's a good stat to have. Um, you also want elemental mastery to increase the damage of your reactions. And as I mentioned earlier, some energy recharge is going to be good for Hu Tao because you do want her burst to come back somewhat often, but it doesn't need to be mandatory. If you get, you know, energy recharge as a substat and it upgrades like once or twice, that's fine. Now let's talk about the um, circlet, goblet, and the sands. So for the circlet, either crit rate or crit damage is going to be your best main stat for it. I mean, whichever one you're lacking, just pick the other one. Or, uh, Pick the one that you're lacking is what I mean. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, next up is the sands, and for this one, you definitely want to go for HP percentage. This is gonna HP percentage is gonna be more damage than attack percentage because Hu Tao actually has a really low base attack. For the goblet, pretty obvious here. We want pyro damage bonus, but if you're still early on in artifact farming, you don't have one with good subsets yet. It's okay to use, you know, HP percentage or uh, elemental mastery. Uh, until you do get a good pyro damage bonus set. Okay, now usually this would be the part where we move into constellations, but there's something I want to cover for Hu Tao specifically, and that is her combos. Hu Tao is a very easy uh, execution character. Her combos are not hard to do at all. Um, it's only four, four things you have to do. Two normal attacks into a charge, and then you animation cancel the charge. That's it. That's her whole combo. Now, the way you animation cancel with Hu Tao depends on whether she's at C0 or C1. So mine's at C0, so I do the jump cancel. So after, as soon as you do the charge attack and you see the damage numbers, you just jump. To end the attack early so you can do it again. Now, if you are at C1, you have the luxury of being able to sprint. If, since your C1 makes it so that Hu Tao doesn't lose stamina from her charge attacks, you can just use sprint. Yeah, we'll just show you what the combo looks like. So you always want to activate your skill first, and then 
Again, you do two normals into a charge, and then you can animation cancel the charge. So one, two, charge. And then for me, it's jump. Jump. Yeah, our elemental skill ended there, so that's why our charge attack was a little slow. But yeah, you just jump to cancel. And then if you again, if you're C1, so you're if you're C1, your attack would look like this. So instead of jumping, we just dash. The reason we want to animation cancel that is because look how long the charge attack goes. Especially if you're just fighting a boss that's like right in front of you, you'll apply your damage. You can only apply your damage once, right? So it's better to end the long animation and just go in again. So you just that, That's basically it. So we'll do it again. So just pop the skill. One, two, charge. Two, charge. One, two, charge. If you want to see more examples of this, Either skip or stick around until we get to the Spiral Abyss uh, showcase, and I'm going to be basically doing that combo all day, every day. Now let's actually talk about constellations for Hu Tao. Um, C1 is going to be the big one, because a lot of Hu Tao mains out there debate on whether or not this one is worth. C1 is called Crimson Bokeh, and it, this is going to activate when you do your elemental skill. Your charge attacks while your elemental skill is active do not cost stamina. So that's why we're able to do a dash cancel instead of a jump cancel. Now there's this whole debate, you know, whether, you know, Hu Tao definitely needs that C1 to feel good to play. You know, it's a lot easier with C1 and stuff like that. And I will agree to an extent that having C1 is a nice quality of life for your Hu Tao. It's definitely going to make playing her feel a lot easier. But do I think it's necessary? Absolutely not. You do not need C1 on your Hu Tao to have a good time. I Mine's been at C0 ever since I pulled her, and I've been able to do all of the content in this game, all of the weekly bosses, Spiral Abyss constantly, and it's just been very, very smooth. So it's nice to have, but not a necessity. That's just my two cents. Now let's talk about Hu Tao's other constellations. C2 is called Ominous Rainfall, and this is going to make your Blood Blossom damage do even more damage. Uh, based off your HP. Also, your burst will also apply a Blood Blossom. So overall, basically this constellation just means more damage for your Hu Tao. Now C3 and C5 are going to increase skill and burst respectively for damage for us. C4 is called Garden of Eternal Rest. Now this one is what I believe to be her weakest constellation. Uh, this is going to make it so that when you defeat an enemy that's affected by a Blood Blossom, Hu Tao is going to do another 12% crit rate to her team, except she's except her. She won't get the benefit of this. So in total, she can give 24% crit rate to your teammates. While this might sound good, this doesn't do anything for boss fights because most bosses in this game do not summon adds. So you're only attacking one target and you won't be getting the benefits of C4. C6 is Butterfly's Embrace and when Hu Tao either takes a lethal hit or her HP drops below 25%, which is really easy to do, she's basically going to go Super Saiyan. She's going to gain a lot of physical and elemental resistance. She's going to gain 100% crit rate, and she has a huge resistance to interruption, which in this case doesn't really matter because you should be using a shielder with Hu Tao, so that doesn't matter too much. But crit rate and a bunch of resistance, and this effect can only trigger every once every minute. So really powerful effect for your Hu Tao, and, and basically if you have this constellation, you can just focus mainly on crit damage and not have to care too much about crit rate. Now let's talk team comps for your Hu Tao, and right before you I have one of the strongest team comps for Hu Tao, and in the game in general. This is absolutely going to tear bosses to shreds. Um, what we have here is Yolan and Jin Cho. To apply plenty of off-field hydro damage so Hu Tao can vaporize said damage. And the trick to getting all of Hu Tao's fancy buffs and having her constantly at a low HP um, without any risk is to use a shielder because we don't want a healer on this team, right? We want Hu Tao to stay at low HP so that she can constantly do more, much more damage. Zhang Li is a great character for this since her shield is so strong. You'll feel comfy, comfy in most fights. The only enemies we have to be careful around are Rift Towns. They will definitely um, put your Hu Tao in, in a lot of danger. Not only that, but because we have two Hydros on this team, we activate the Soothing Water 
um, buff or the Hydro Resonance buff. Uh, this is going to increase everybody's HP by 25%, which means more shields for Zhongli, more damage for Yulon, and more damage for Hu Tao. So it's a really, really good buff for the team. And overall, this is just a really, really strong team for Hu Tao. Now, if you don't have Yulon, you were unlucky in her previous rerun banner, you can use other characters like Mona, Andis, or even Barbara. And if you don't have Zhang Li, uh, other characters I can recommend are Layla, which we got for free in the uh, summer event. I also have a guide on her if you want to check that out. Um, you can also use other characters like Toma. You'll get the Pyro Resonance buff as well. Or you can use Diona as your shielder slash healer if you so choose. Jing Cho, I feel like, should be a staple. And he's, you know, he's a free-to-play friendly character, so obviously no, not much replacements for him there. Now yeah, this is just a melt variation of the team here, so if you didn't want to do Vaporize for whatever reason and you want to run melt, you could use someone like Kea or Rosaria um, as your cryo applicators, and they'll have plenty of cryo application for your Hu Tao to uh, melt off of. And this is probably going to be the last team I can recommend, but this is an old classic. When Hu Tao was first released, one of her more popular team comps was something called the Walnut Comp. And that included Albedo and Zhang Li in the team. This activates the Geo Resonance buff, which is actually one of the better ones. Um, it increases your shield uh, strength by 15%, increases your damage by 15%, and then decreases Geo Res by 20%. But your Albedo and your Zhang Li in this case will be doing even even more damage, extra damage uh, off field for you, which was really nice. It seems okay, but it definitely got overshadowed once Double Hydro became a thing. All right, welcome to the Spiral Abyss. We're just going to do a showcase with using Hu Tao on the first half um, of Spiral Abyss Floor 12, and I figured I'd use her here rather than the second half just because there's more bosses um, for her to just absolutely shred. So let's get started. First boss is the Magu Kenki. Very yeah. easy boss fight. And just gotta wait for him to get up. And... I'm only gonna do one all here because. He doesn't have that much HP before he does that one attack. There it is. Now we're, now we're in phase two of the Magu Kenki fight. Populon's burst, and then we... There's more of the combo, right, where we're doing normal attacks into the charge. And as you can see, we're, uh, like we are absolutely destroying this boss, right? Like it's it's been less than a minute, and Magu Magu Kenki down in what was that, 45 seconds? Going into the second chamber, which is the crab boss, right? Yeah. There he is. Got a burst back. And we're just going to do the same thing we did with the Mongo Kenki, which is to do a bunch of charge attacks. Now let me grab the burst, a potion and show and you one again. Then grab this. He's about to get his shield back, right? I think he has some heavy fire resistance. You can see Hu Tao's only doing 43k um, crit damage. So regardless, I'm going to keep this boss in a reasonable amount of time. There we go. Like a minute and some change there for the crab boss, which isn't too bad. Alright, so we're in the third chamber of the Spiral Ab Abyss here, and this one isn't a boss uh, chamber. It does have, like, I forgot how many enemies are in this, but I guess it's just a way of seeing how good Hu Tao can be when it comes to groups of enemies to fight. <laughs> Now that our bursts are up, really should try to focus the, uh, the dumb dudes. It can be really annoying. 
We'll use uh, Jingcho and Yolan for the shield there. Finish this guy off. I did that jump a little too early. Oh, now we want to go for this guy. Oops. <laughs> Don't we need to do that. Some big 84k charge attack damage if you saw that there. And the Hutao and team have managed to basically make this uh, Spiral Abyss free. That is pretty much going to be it for our guide on Hutao. A couple of things I should probably point out before we uh, wrap this up is that one, you should definitely try to use her burst as more of a finisher. So you'll get a feel for when Hu Tao's uh, elemental skill is about to end. Remember it has a duration of about 9 seconds, but you know, unless you're like counting in your head or something in the middle of a fight, it's hard to keep track, right? So you always want to do it right at like the very last second of your elemental skill for big boosted burst damage. The other thing I want to mention is that if you are fighting a group of enemies without any sort of grouper like Kazuha or Sucrose, try to angle yourself or position yourself in a way that your charge attack will hit multiple enemies when you dash through a line. This will save you a lot of time uh, in, the, in things like the Spiral Abyss and such. But other than that, I just want to say that, you know, Hu Tao is just one of those characters that's been strong ever since her, ever since her release and has continued to dominate the meta, just be a very solid, strong character uh, ever since. She hasn't been power crept yet. If you have any other questions uh, for me or something that I missed to uh, or I didn't exp excuse me or something I didn't explain well, please leave a comment down below. I'll do my best to try to answer you in the comments. Um, if you have your own Hu Tao tips for new players out there who might be pulling her during her rerun banner, feel free to leave a comment as well. And that is going to be a wrap for me. I'll do my best to try to get these guides out, but. Don't forget to leave a like and or subscribe to the channel if you like this kind of content. I'll do my best to get even more Genshin content as well as other games um, out uh, as soon as I can. And with that being said, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.